Hello, welcome back to the MP. So today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about debugging. We're going to give you some strategies that you can use when you have a problem on the MP. And pretty much when you're working on the MP, you always have a problem because there's usually some test case that's not passing. Um, but what we want to do is zero in on some systematic approaches that you can use that will really help throughout the debugging process. So we're actually going to do uh, a couple of these uh, today, and then we'll do a few more later where we'll talk about other aspects of debugging that you might find useful as well. Um, okay, so I've got a problem here. So um, I'm, I'm working on uh, MP0, um, and somehow, and this can happen, right? Like I was messing around and I changed something, and you know, I've got the tests, uh, I've got a couple tests working, but it looks like I've broken a bunch of tests. Um, and these were tests that were working when I got the MP. And again, you know, we want you to experiment. We want you to try things. I can certainly figure out, you know, probably one of the better ways to address situations like this is just to, just to use Git to help you um, work backwards, right? So I can uh, use Git to say, okay, what have I changed about the code? And then that would actually allow me to zero in right on what the problem is. But for the sake of this demo, what I'm gonna do is just pretend that I don't have that option or pretend that I'm trying to pass one of the test cases that requires me to write some code. And so I'm gonna think about, okay, there's something wrong with my code here. Um, how do I figure out what it is? Now, the first step I'm going to describe quickly is one that may seem sort of strange, um, but it's sort of a nice way to get started, which is clean up your code, right? And, and what do I mean by that? So there's two large components to that. One is format it properly, uh, and we've given you a tool to do that. I'm going to show you in a minute. And the other is, in general, if you've, um, you know, sometimes when you're experimenting or you're working on a piece of code, it can be natural to try some things, then comment them out, and then try a few more things and comment them out. But sometimes you get to the point where, and I'm not going to show an example of this, but you have a large block of code inside a method, and most of it is commented out. There's only a few bits that are actually doing anything, and that becomes very hard to read. So the goal of this first step is to get our code to a place where it's easier for us to read and understand. So that involves both formatting it properly so it looks correct, so we have the indentation in the right spot, so we identify any missing braces or anything like that. And then also, if you have large chunks of commented out code, either remove them or move them somewhere else so they're out of the way. When you look at a method, you want to be able to see here are the steps that are, are being being followed. And particularly if you have a large amount of commented code and a little bit of code and a large amount of commented code after it, it gets easy to sort of forget that that one line is in the middle of all that uh, stuff that's not being used and forget that it might be doing something and maybe the thing it's doing is causing our problem. Okay, so, and you know, the cool thing up until this point, you know, we've tried to uh, get you into good habits when it comes to writing code. But there are also great tools out there that you can use to reformat code, and we've given you one with your project. So if you go to the run configuration and click lint, so I've made a little bit of a mess here. You can see that I've got, and, and Check Style's whining about this, I've got, uh, you know, this should be on a new line, I've got some bad indentation here, like these two things should be on the same level, this is pushed over for no reason, this is wrong. You know, it, it pained me greatly to, to do this, um, but I can fix it really easily. I can fix this by hand, um, and the best practice is really to get in the habit of just writing code that adheres to the formatting specification naturally, but I can also fix it magically and easily by running this lint task. So if I click on lint, you're going to watch as this chunk of code is magically transformed back into the beautiful and correctly formatted piece of code that I wanted. So step one when you're debugging is clean up. Allow yourself to focus, get the code into a good place syntactically, you know, uh, make sure that you can zero in on the part of the code that you're working on or where you think the problem might be, move any big chunks of code out of the way or off to the side or something, run the formatter and get things set up so that we can really focus and zero in and understand what's happening. So that's the really important step one. Um, and that's something, you know, these steps are steps that uh, going forward, when you ask for help, we'll expect you to have completed. So we're going to want to see code that's in good shape. We're going to want to see you having done a few of these things um, uh, before you uh, ask for help, because this is part of how you learn to help yourself do these things. And you may find you don't even need to ask us for help because you solve the problem on your own. That's tremendously empowering. 
right? At some point, you'll go off, you'll build and create your own software, and you won't need our help. And our goal is to get you to that point. We're happy to help you along the way, and people do help each other in the real world, but the more you can do on your own, the better. So step one, clean up, reformat the code, get it to a good spot uh, so that you can read it and so that other people who might be helping you can also read it.